Thanks Seriously. for handing it off. <laughs> well, this, yeah, so me, me and Chikovi were talking about this game a bit before we get into it here, and it, like, it has the potential to be hyper-explosive. Um, it's, there's not a whole lot of, like, interaction here, uh, blue, like, stack interaction-wise. There's, like, a bit of removal, but not a whole lot of stack interaction. And there are two reasonably fast very consistent decks going in the first two seats so it's it's really yeah just gonna come down to that um but i think we should get into the game i, I think we should give the people what they've been waiting for <laughs> exactly yeah there, like you said there's gonna be some intense stuff that's gonna be going on here and it looks like from just kind of what we can see there's you know just doing some basic turn one stables uh you know lands uh Hopefully we can get something to ex pretty excite. Well, yeah. I mean that's an early man. That, yeah, I mean that's <laughs> that's exactly what. Oh my god! Into a soul ring. Jeez, I wanted to chill for a minute before we <laughs> got into this. Yeah, I mean this game. Yeah, I mean the promise of this game ending early to a go to win is uh is coming true as we watch. Yeah. Uh, so. Oh my god, Mindstone it has the extra acceleration. Crazy. So this is already a turn two Goto. Um, and if we see, oh my god, that's a Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> you could literally not ask for yeah. any better turn one hand yeah. for Goto yeah. right now. Oh my god. Like maybe, maybe okay, no no, here's here's the ask, right? Is that this wheel of fortune resolves and then he draws into more fast mana and a treats and a soaker. <laughs> yeah. That's that's the only way this could get any better. <laughs> like we're looking for things like Lotus Petal, Mana Vault. <laughs> yeah. So uh Chromox is even like we gotta keep going. <laughs> yeah. God. So, yeah, so we're Go thankfully, ahead. thankfully, uh, there's no mana floating here, so we're probably just seeing this uh, wheel maybe dump a bit more mana and then pass. So theoretically, the other players do have a chance to actually interact here, but this, like, it's so hard to stop a Goto at this point because now you have to stop. It's like he's very likely going to be able to cast the Goto uh, next turn and then have the mana to recast it if, it's, if it gets countered the turn after that. And we have a potential to see a handful of, like, hate, more acceleration, interaction, like, blasts. A goblin welder would be nuts here against, like, all this green removal for the helm of the host. Oh, yeah. So, th I think the main thing that's going to be going through a lot of people's minds right now, after looking at all this nonsense that just came from Goto, is like, okay, so now I'm just going to get a random seven. And I have to deal with this. <laughs> like, we gotta yeah. try to stop a Goto from coming down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, man. So, luckily, like you said, everyone else in the pod is sol solidly green. Got two other blue players sitting here. Yep. There's, so, like, they have the chance here to sort of stop this in its tracks, especially, we all know, Wheel hands could be hit or miss. There's still a chance that Hokey doesn't quite hit everything that they need. And then maybe like stumble, maybe like the first win attempt here gets interacted with and they stumble a bit and the rest of the pod can sort of take over and lock that down. But man, it's also really interesting to note here is that this wheel hasn't actually resolved yet. There's a lot of discussion happening here. Yeah. Uh, and I think that really gives us an idea of like, what our players are looking at as far as their their sevens and sixes that they kept. So um, maybe somebody's looking to try and get some spice off this wheel. You know, Something like that. Trash. We could also have like some discussion going about like, uh, yeah, so there's a force here. Yep. So LJ um, snaps that off. Real unfortunate to pitch that fluster storm to that force, though. Yeah, you, you really want all the interaction you can get in this spot, especially as Edric. You, you're not going to be winning in the first three turns most of the time. You want the game to go a bit longer so your Edric can start accumulating value. It really sucks to lose that interaction early. So luckily here from Silvala, we're seeing a little bit more of a slow start. Land into a bird. Uh, I mean, as dude, as as slow as Silvala can be, that this is still like representing a turn three with some yeah. very like limited um, requirements, like just another land drop, cast Silvala, cast one of your fatties, just start going off immediately. 
it looks like we got a soul ring from LJ, and I think this looks like a raw pass the turn. Yeah, um, I mean, starting with Soaring, definitely not shabby, but I mean, when you look at what Goto did turn one, it's just it doesn't even compare. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Goto doing what Goto does best, right? And that's setting the pace. Uh, oh my god. Else. And we have another Mana Crypt turn one. This is crazy. And a turn it's... one Destiny Spinner. Oh my god. <laughs> look, I can already hear ever. I can hear LJ and Hyde yeah. at the table. Look. Chill, I mean, dude, LJ's, LJ's pouring himself a drink. He can't handle this right now. Yeah. <laughs> this is oh. crazy. Yeah, so, I mean, we, we might you might have thought that this game was going to slow down once that wheel got countered, but I, I don't think that's the case. I think that we're going to see probably, like, two turn three win attempts here, or, like, something along those lines, because I just can't imagine turn one Destiny Spinner ending in any other way than a very fast food chain. Exactly. Now, as, just to kind of get some perspective, because I mean, you've played a lot of Commander. Um, so, it, as far as going into Goto's turn two with what looks like potentially seven mana, yeah, seven mana available. Yeah. Now, what would you kind of be looking for to keep setting the pace as what it is? So this is actually really interesting because uh, Hoki is down on gas now. Obviously, the wheel was the bet here to get refilled on the 7 after dumping all this mana. Hoki actually hasn't counted to 11 yet. Goto needs to count to 11 mana, basically, to win the game. You need to cast Goto for 6 mana. Goto will search up Helm of the Host, and then you need to equip Helm of the Host for 5 mana. Um, and that's a combo that wins the game. Hoki doesn't actually have the 11 mana here. So you actually have to look at... Okay, so here's a base alt monolith. This is really good this this is really good for mana banking um you you might be considered like you might consider looking at goto for the first time here like just slamming goto searching up a hell of the host and then passing and then equipping the next turn the issue with that here is again we're in a very heavy green pod and there's a pretty high likelihood that somebody here will have some bounce spell artifact enchantment removal spell something along those sorts to break that up in the turn cycle between you casting goto and then equipping the helm um, so Hoagie really wants to wait until they have 11 mana all banked up at once and then just go for it all in one turn here. Yeah, which looks like they're really close with that Basalt model now. I'm counting 10, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, so, so like a land drop just immediately gets you there for an attempt. Crazy. Yeah, it's going to get pretty gross pretty quick if, if, if Lady Luck is on Hoagie's side, you know? Yeah. Yep. I think I think what Hoagie's actually doing here is actually considering that line of play that we were talking about. Um, they haven't passed turn yet. I think they're actually weighing the downsides and upsides of slamming a Goto here potentially. Okay, so they pass. Cool. Good nice. play. Good play. Tight. Being disciplined, not just like slamming the Goto immediately and then just like crossing fingers and praying. Um, That's something I would do. It's just hey, <laughs> deal with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just slam this. Hope it works. Make it happen. So it looks like we're seeing a bro here uh, off of higher. So, uh, yep. and then just draw a pass. Totally in line with what Savala wants to be doing. Turn one door, turn two Savala, turn three go nuts. Make all the mana in the world. Yeah, especially with Savala, like, it's all about consistency, right? Being able to get to the end goal as consistently as possible through as much interaction as possible. It looks like yep. we got a dry arbor for land for time from Lewis. That's not the best unless we're seeing. Oh, ooh, Ristic. That helps. That helps. You don't. You don't always want to be drawing your Dryad Arbor, um, especially in Edric. A lot of the time, you want to be getting it off of a green fetch land when you already have all your mana as an extra body. Um, you don't always want to draw it, have to play it because it is effectively a tap land. But <laughs> following it up with the turn two Ristic study definitely worth it. <laughs> Yeah, and, and unfortunately, too, I've <clears throat> seen this Dryad Arbor so early in the game. It looks like it's not getting through anywhere. No, unfortunately. I mean, maybe if they can keep Goto off the board, you get, like, hits through on them. But, God, it's, yeah, it's not looking great. So, uh, yeah, it looks like a Bayou, or I'm sorry. Yeah, it looks like a, uh, a Bayou from Snacks and then a Finhorn Elves. Debating something to do with this mana crit, though. I mean, again, if this is just a food chain into like exile the dork, play another dork, exile that dork, play cast from exile creature, that's this is a line of play that exists and could happen this turn without like much any additional stuff. So, 
Okay, it looks like they were just paying for the risk exchange. Right. Gotta pay those taxes, because yep. it gets out of hand quick. Gotta be disciplined. Um, especially in a game like this where uh, I'm assuming we're looking at somebody having having interaction here. I wouldn't be surprised to see Snacks having interaction for this go to win attempt, holding up that extra mana. Uh, so paying for the Rhystic study on whatever you can, definitely worth it, because if this game's going to go long, you do not want Rhystic study drawing like 15 cards. That's that's the way that LJ just takes over this game in the late game. Exactly, and that's exactly what's going to happen if Goto tries to do any shenanigans here. Um, yep. There's a Bayou up, so... Oh my god. So this is actually... Hoki just played an Emergence Zone, which makes uh, the threat of Goto through Counter Magic specifically incredibly scary. Um, this is, I think, what we like to call in the business the clench. <laughs> which is <laughs> uh everybody here that's not goto is scared of goto just having it um so i mean like we're gonna have to see um thankfully goto can't actually win the game with emergent zone um your your win is actually combat based uh you can't make your infinite goto's uh, on somebody else's turn and actually win but it definitely helps in bypassing counter magic because you can wait until everybody's tapped down and then slam your goto through counter magic Thankfully, they can't make those infinite godos on opponents. Yeah. That would be oh my. Toxic. God. Well, yes, I would like to win this game at instant speed. <laughs> <laughs> Done. So yeah, definitely hokey dipping in the tank here. Um, yeah, it's it's really what you're thinking about here is I like LJ has shown the forest higher. The only way that higher's interacting with you potentially here is a force of vigor. Um, so you're really the, the thing that you're really considering here is whether or not Snacks has removal with that one mana. Um, if he does, and you're not likely to have the interaction or like backup immediately available to, um, deal with like a nature's claim out of Snacks. Uh, so you, you're again, really just spending a lot of time here, weighing the odds, weighing your options. If I do go for it and it gets, uh, stopped. How can I come back from that? How many hits are left in my deck? How likely am I to be able to get back into the game in the next couple of turns? Um, and if not, like, if he doesn't have it, like, I just get to win. So. That's a lot. That's of a lot mana. of mana. That, that's a go-to. So, like, what would you say the odds are of Hoki just having the deflecting swat in hand? Man, like, it, it's, it has to be so low. I mean, if it would have had to have been drawn in the last two draw steps because we would have seen it, I think. Oh, no, because it didn't have the mana. Yeah, yeah actually. So we wouldn't have had the, the mana or the commander in play to swap the force of will. In which case, this is like one of the most nuts opening hands ever. <laughs> Just like opening all of this plus a deflecting swat. So now, as far as with, because uh, it looks like it was just Goto, and, or Goto is still on the stack, uh, from what it looks like, because we're not seeing any tutoring. Here. No, I, I think we're seeing, okay, it's Force from Snacks. Yep. Okay. Oh, and pitches the, pitches the Mist Holographin. So he has the Cast from Exile already. This is, <laughs> that is possibly the best card to pitch to Force of Will in all of Magic. <laughs> so free. So yeah, it's, free. it's actually so, it's just, it's just a free counter spell. It's great. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna pay a life and, and you know, Oh my god. My Hoki had the Duretti, that's crazy. So Hoki actually had the backup for the removal on the Helm of the Host. So that Force of Will was absolutely necessary. Yeah, and luckily, you know, Hoki being smart with that play, baiting it out with the Godo, yep. so that way the, the Duretti will yep. dissolve. You can, you can you land your Planeswalker, have your backup. Yep. Yep. Now you gotta deal with it, and it's gonna get gross. <laughs> yeah, this is, and it's really rough here, because um, higher is almost certainly not putting damage on that. You want to be tapping Savala for mana. Um, so, like, the only way that higher is hitting this Duretti to try to get it dead is when you're not activating Savala, which... Like you're it's turn three, you have a Savala in play. You're gonna activate Savala to do stuff with it. Um LJ doesn't really have a board yet. He can like trade a mana to hit the Duretti with his Dried Arbor, and then Snacks only has two damage. So like this Duretti is almost certainly living through the turn cycle unless the entire table is um working together to get rid of it. That oh my god. Bro storm. 
Yikes. This, yeah, I mean, gates are wide open from what we can see. Both Force of Will's gone. Hokey almost certainly doesn't have interaction here. Um, if 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 higher has it, higher has it. I, I, I am, I'd be incredibly surprised if somebody else has the interaction for this win intent. Yeah. It oh my like god. He swinging at the but he Dredi, is hitting though. the Duretti. That's crazy. Yeah. I don't know. I got scared for everyone at the pot. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, that's crazy, because that means that Hire... Because I, I almost certainly, if Hire has any attempt at a win there, he goes for it. You've seen both forces, everybody's tapped out of blue mana, you just immediately slam it and try to get there. This reads to me like Hire doesn't actually have the pieces assembled yet. Um, maybe maybe waiting on a fatty, like a 6-plus power creature to activate Silvala with. Um, it could be that he has something like a Phyrexian Dreadnought, but doesn't have a payoff yet. Mm -hmm. um which is not where you want to be but uh yeah i mean either that or maybe potentially you kept like a high interaction hand and then just went like dork silvala and is now just going to be trying to hold up um like remove like artifact and enchantment removal for the rest of this game um which i mean that's reasonable because that's one of the only ways that you can actually deal with this food chain now with the destiny spinner on the board um having the nature's claim is basically the only way that you're going to deal with this yeah, which actually, um, well, it looks like we got a green sun zine, Ooh. which could be for two. It's what I'm, it looks like. I'm thinking this might be an oof. Um, it has to be, right? Fuck. It's, yeah. So the, the good thing about oof here is you shut off Snax's crypt, which is um, basically you lock him down to three mana only for the uh, Force of Will, which requires like a lot of mana dorks to get up to the mana to recast the Mist Hollow Griffin. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Okay. So ah, Okay, so we did, we did get information that higher actually mulliganed to five, so this makes a bit more sense. Um, potentially was just looking for like dork lands and then hoping to draw into gas. Um, makes a lot more sense to us. There's the Yuf. Um, I like this a lot. Uh, you're you're stopping the Goto from having another attempt because uh, you, like it gets really messy if you just let Goto have another cast here. Um, so locking Goto out of the game for the next foreseeable future here, and then locking Snacks' mana down to make it a lot harder to win with the food chain here. Yeah, which like at this point, uh, with looking at Snacks' board state, even without the mana crypt, if Snacks just naturally has the food chain here. Could still possibly go for it. All yeah. Natural. Uh, well, of 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 note, there is still a risk study in play, um, yeah. which is effectively a hard hate piece against uh, against food chain. But this is like locking down snacks even more, and having seen higher without any real like gas or anything to do the oof targeting the other two players is great here because you have basically like one person already out of the game just by default and then locking mm -hmm. the other two players down even more makes this a lot easier for uh, lg to keep going of note lg did miss a land drop though which yeah. could become a pretty big issue yeah then unfortunately enough to um like for lg and uh as well as like uh higher in this pod that you know Dodo hasn't gotten anything down other than the planeswalker yep. so now being reduced down to red red and colorless if they if uh hokey misses their land drop uh then it's gonna be pretty difficult to try and get back into this game unless yep. they remove the oof yep that being said Dodo does play a lot of creature removal obviously um that's one of the few things that red can do is kill things with power two or less three or less so <laughs> you have those options certainly you have a card advantage or, well card filtering engine i guess in uh in duretti um so you certainly have options to get there but yeah it's it's a rough find of note also snacks did have to pass turn without doing anything that's a sort of a hallmark of food chain is just when you don't have anything to do there's not much to do you there's no value in the command zone for most food chain commanders um you're just sort of hoping to get there off your opener and the few draws that you get along the way so now even though uh higher did multiply uh coming into turn four not missing any land drops there is some high potential that higher could start drawing some cards 
yeah i mean like, there's there's a lot of hits in that deck that are like creature tutors get you there very quickly here um because you can start doing things like creature tutoring for ewit to get back the creature tutor and then you have an ewit in play for like teamer saber tooth stuff and that spirals out of control very quickly with enough mana um there are a lot of big draw spells in that deck stuff like life's legacy stuff like Rishkar expertise um any of that kind of thing oh okay so this is really cool we're seeing it invigorate on Silvella. this Means that higher wants to make a lot of mana this turn. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, uh, that gives a plus. Well, it gives plus four plus four yeah. at the cost of giving your opponents three life in order to cast it for free, which you're more than happy to do. <laughs> do that all day. <laughs> oh yeah, take that trade every day of the week. Um. So now yeah. this is going to give it. Looks like... See, yes, the plus this... plus four is going to give it like because uh, it's a natural two two, right? Yeah, so this gets it up to six power, which is actually a really, really uh, integral gate to Savala's game plan. Is you need for most of your combos a creature with power six or greater, so that Savala can tap for six. Oh my god, he's casting a turn simmer symbiosis. Oh snap! That's... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Th this one has a this one has a lot of uh, a lot of things that can go wrong for the rest of the table here. Uh, Tim Chamber Symbiosis hits stuff real good. <laughs> Where does <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, yeah, and just like we were talking about, because we did discuss this a little bit before the game, uh, and it looked it, we always talked about well, given that Goto is going to be setting the pace of this pod, so Vala yeah. has a a chance to bring up that back end after yeah. that and try and close it out. Yeah, so. definitely. This is like Savala 100%. Like all, in almost every game that Savala is playing it, it wants to be in that like win second slot. So like if you can be like right behind the first person to attempt to win and get stopped, you're in like the place that you want to be. And that's exactly where higher is right now is everybody spent like all of their interaction on Hokey and all of it was interaction that like there's very little Oh my god, he found a Woodland Bellower. This... Oh, jeez! Oh, Christ. <laughs> We're doing it all, boys! We're doing it all! <laughs> Woodland Bellower is so good here. So Woodland Bellower, um, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that you can do with this. Uh, you can e it back the turn timber symbiosis if you had the untapper in hand already. You could get a Scrib Ranger here to untap the Savala to make more mana. Um, if you have, like, a, an elf in hand, you get a Wirewood Symbiote. There, there's so much that you can get here. The world is Hire's Oyster currently. Yeah, needless to say. Um, so, I, I honestly, it, yeah, if, if Hire doesn't have that untapper in hand, this is definitely what's going to get that untapper. Uh, yeah, so certainly. That... And if, if Hire already has the untapper in hand, this just gets even even more wild. Um, I'm, I'm assuming this would probably get an Eternal Witness. You having an eternal witness in play is actually really important for this deck because it means that as soon as you can find a teamer saber tooth you can start sinking your mana really effectively into bouncing it back to your hand recasting the eternal witness rebuying your tutors um rebuying mana and untappers that kind of thing um so if he already has the untapper i wouldn't be surprised to see that um seeing that he mulled down this low i wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't have the untapper already um so we could just see this making more mana Oh man, and, and I don't know about for you, but just as I'm watching Hire go th look through their deck, it goosebumps. Just oh, like, yeah. oh, <laughs> anticipation yeah. through the roof right now. <laughs> I mean, see, um, see, I okay. As an admitted Solvala stan and somebody whose first real CDH deck was playing Solvala, I know I'm biased, but I never get bored of watching Solvala win. It's like the model green storm aspect is so interesting and so cool, and like the the lines just get so cool because there are, you're always looking at all these different tutor targets where. <laughs> Interestingly enough, the cards in your deck on average are so bad that it makes the storm lines really interesting because there's like not an obvious best thing to be doing, right? <laughs> so you're like, there's no ad nauseum that you can just tutor for to like use all your mana on and cast and win the game. So you have to find like all these other things to be doing instead, which just makes it so much cooler. Yeah, it's like, it's almost like uh, I like to reference decks like this almost to like, you know, finding the pieces of Exodia. You know, yeah, all the yeah, cards yeah. are really bad, but when they're together, it's just this is broken. Like, yeah. <laughs> this is this is insane. I don't see how anything yeah. could be better than this. Yeah. Um, so, 
Oh man, but yeah, I, I love especially uh, decks like uh, Sylvala Bro Storm, uh, even Yisan. Uh, yeah. Just how how they're able to manipulate, you know, these so what 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 most would consider subpar cards, yeah, and make and just exploit them to the fullest extent. extent. Oh yeah. Woo. So actually, looking at Hire's uh, tutoring choices here, he is bleeding a bit to camera. We'll take full advantage of that. It looks like yeah. he's looking at a. Actually, looks like he's looking at a Manglehorn right now, um, which is also incredibly interesting. Um, I mean, makes a lot of sense if you're looking at a Manglehorn here to like maybe kill the Rhystic Study if you already have mana in hand, yeah. or if you already have like other stuff to be doing. That could be really good. Alternatively, also just great to like try to get rid of this destiny spinner and make sure that you don't die for another turn cycle here yeah and it and it also like in, in the offhand as well um if that not only oh, is it gonna be able to... sorry chat chat reminded me immediately like five people in chat that mega one doesn't fact only kill artifacts forgot about that one yep yeah the trade-off is that it does the blind obedience effect so could not kill a rustic study would actually just be killing more than likely, like, um, I guess the yeah, this actually that's that's a that's weird a rough one. choice, yeah. That, that there's a lot of good artifacts that are, are in play, but mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I could definitely see things, uh, like hitting the basalt monolith or hitting a mana, or I'm sorry, yeah, hitting a soul ring off of LJ's board. actually, yeah, um, because this actually makes sense. So, if if you don't have the win this turn, actually, um, this is actually a reasonable hedge against Hokey having drawn a removal spell for the oof. Um, because if you remove some of the big mana from Hokey's board, it makes it a lot harder to actually go for the win again with Goto. And it means that you sort of like lock down people's like fast mana attempts as well. So like this also makes Adnaws harder for uh, stacks to use uh, realistically. So like maybe if you're expecting some sequence, like Hokey finds the removal, removes oof goes for it gets stopped snacks through the adnaws and then his mana crypts online um and has the black mana this is this also helps against that that being said not going for the manglehorn going for an alsor shepherd also pretty good <laughs> yeah yeah being able to not only have all of your stuff be uncounterable but also if anyone tries to win the game your removal is uncounterable oh yeah oh, couldn't have to be in a better situation yep yeah, so, so there is okay. Um, it does actually seem like no, okay. Um, yeah, it seems like higher doesn't have anything else to be doing. I think we saw a pass here, so going back to LJ's turn, yeah, because I mean, especially with you know, having four mana, there is a lot that you can do, but it's at this point, should you do it, yeah, especially if the especially if you're like spending all of your mana on some gas spell um it doesn't seem great here because you like a lot of the time if you don't hit a fat creature with the savala turn um it's sort of hard to convince yourself to pass the turn because like your stuff like invigorate is going to wear off in end of turn and then you're not going to have the fat creature left over to go for it next turn because he hit the woodland bellower you can actually be a bit more comfortable in passing the turn back around the turn cycle because you still have the six mana coming back next turn so it looks like here that uh lj might be trying to think about what to do with this oof because you know it's doing the lord's work right now yeah it really is but it the way that it swung the power it, you know the power dynamic at the pod uh you know honestly might be some negotiations to try and get rid of the oof to help slow Savala down. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's a it's a hard it's, it's a sticky. hard decision to make because Goto is so close to just like getting there through this anyway and it like I I don't think that there's enough interaction left without the oof at the table to stop it. So I think like yes, the oof is giving Silvala a bit of advantage here, but I think you just have to stick that out and hope that you don't die to hire uh, while holding Goto down and then just hope that you can eventually get up to the mana to do your broken stuff. Well, it looks like we didn't see another land. We didn't see a land from LJ, but we did see an Arbor Elf. So that's almost yeah. a land. Almost. Yeah, so. close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, actually, it's better. It is better than a land when you have a Utopia Swallow or Wild Growth. So, you know what? If we see, if we see LJ draw some land enchants, could just be better. 
Um, yeah. Also, of, also of note, we did see the oof attack through to Hokey's face instead of the uh, the Duretti. Um, mm-hmm. Potentially, he wants to take uh, Hokey off of another man off of again the treasonous ogre that we talked about at the beginning of the uh, at the beginning of this game. Um, treasonous ogre is basically one of the hottest rips in Hokey's deck right now. Um, there's some stuff that you can uh, do to get past an oof, um, like with Hammer of Nizan and that kind of stuff. Uh, to sort of bypass having to like try to activate an equip cost so like restricting Hokey's access to mana off of the potential like top deck is reasonable here yeah so looks like we're trying to draw some more cards off this to ready uh, yep. definitely showing that we don't have the removal for this oof uh, and we don't have a, that... a way to get around it yet did I just see an arc trail be discarded by Hokey I thought I saw that as well Might have been. Okay. Well, made a land drop anyway. We'll see. It, we're, we're, it's a bit of glare. We'll we'll see if we can get a <laughs> get a confirmation on what that was at some point. But um uh, yeah, going it shouldn't to, matter so that I'm, much. <laughs> it was discarded. Yeah, now because I was able to see a little bit of the art there, even though there was some glare on it, and it does look like the art is similar to the arc trail. Um, oh my god. Wandering Archaic. <laughs> Woo! This game. What a card. What a card. Um, yeah, so I mean, this that, card, yeah. Yeah, it's just, it's it's a really strong card, Wandering Archaic. And being in a non blue deck, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, if your stuff wasn't uncounterable already, you really don't have to worry about yeah. counter spells. Now it's double uncounterable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this, this also really actually taxes LJ's win attempts. Um, because not paying two and then giving your opponent Silvala player a turn spell, usually not a great idea. <laughs> um, yeah. that being said, it like, if you do end up going infinite, it's not that huge of an issue because, uh, I believe how it works is that the copy resolves first and then yours resolves. So you get your turn first. Correct. Um, yes. but yeah, but it's still like if you're doing like non infinite turn stuff and then you're just like giving your Silvalo opponent extra turns while you're doing that, things can go wrong again very quickly. <laughs> oh, yeah, is that those turn spells add up, you know? Yeah, hey, yeah, you, you can get a turn spell. All right, now you can have another. All right, that's two. If you can't wait on it's yeah. so I can't wait with two free turns, <laughs> bro. <laughs> yeah, just crazy. Uh, okay, so it actually looks like the card that was discarded was actually a, uh, it was a Cursed Mirror. So that's the, uh, one-turn copy that's also a Mana Rock. Um, so, interesting one. Um, there, yeah, I definitely think that it's reasonable to discard that, considering that there's not much going on here. And also, Duretti can just weld it back in at any time. So, you sort of just, like, get it in the bin, trade it out for a card that's useful now, and then, like, can potentially, if it becomes useful later, you can Duretti it back in, um, and make it a copy of... Hey, maybe potentially this wandering archaic if he wants to go for a win attempt. So now this is just I, I love just to see this happen. So I gotta get your opinion on it. Yeah. What are the odds that we see this Duretti actually ult in this pod? Like, I know it's probably not gonna happen, but that would be mind blowing if it did, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah, we we could see it happen. It it looks like people are sort of reticent to actually go after and attack the Duretti right now. Um, I mean, that being said, there is a Woodland Beller that's like primed and ready to go on yeah. <laughs> Higher's turn to just like slap it. But I mean, you, people people forget about things all the time. P- potentially, uh, he wants to put that damage somewhere else. Maybe we maybe we do see it all. <laughs> Yeah, okay, so, so we're just we're just working out some technical difficulties here. Obviously, uh, playing online not as easy as playing in real life, as far as you know, keeping everybody in existence and not in the void. <laughs> but we're uh, we're we're pulling them back from the void right now. Yeah, I mean, just like with uh, the game itself, it, you know, some things can unintentionally happen to kind of kind of cause some arise. But hey. We getting it worked out. Looks like we're getting everything back together here. Yeah. Man, so we're seeing... Yeah, okay. So we are seeing the attack. I think we're going to kill Duretti here. Yep. Sort of get rid of Hokey's value engine. Um, 
it, it is really the thing that like if you want to keep goto from trying to get back to the game it's really important to keep his card selection down there's not a lot of card selection in mono red goto doesn't play a lot of the card selection that's in mono red so getting some of that like looting down is not great um So we have higher looking. There's, yep. Um. All right, looks like we're thinking about something here. Oh, uh, do we pass? Yeah, okay. So we passed turn to yes. LJ. Yeah. yeah. So it's LJ. Okay. Um. So. Uh, yeah, we'll see. I mean, LG's in a really rough spot here just because he's sort of uh, the he's sort of locked under his own oof, which is like a necessary evil. But the fact that he can only just now cast Edric because he has been making his land drops and then like casting the Edric involves him tapping out is like not super great here. Yeah, and not only that, but like if he does cast Edric, the only thing he can swing with to draw cards is Collector Oof. Yeah, so, exactly. <laughs> it's like there's it's, just not a whole lot here. Um, yeah. I mean, that being said, like it does start to open up the next turn after that. You have an Arbor Elf, you have your Dryad Arbor, you have the Oof, you have the Edric, you're potentially drawing four cards there. But yeah, I, I feel like you really have to weigh your options here of um, like holding up interaction for stuff because right now, now that Hire, we know that Hire isn't really doesn't like have more gas in hand uh things like a swan song can still stop him a lot of Silvala's like big draw spells are counterable by uh stuff like swan song um that kind of uh counter spell effect and then you'd still be able to pay for the wandering archaic with that mm -hmm. um but yeah okay so seeing snacks again do the food chain thing <laughs> of passing because you don't have a value engine unfortunately um <laughs> we have it looks like yeah. So it looks like that uh, Snacks is literally just a white man away from being able to hard cast first slip. Oh, yeah. And it, hey, don't discount the value of a 7-7 seven, seven in this game. <laughs> this is, hey, look. Things, yeah, could go very, very well for Snacks really quickly, depending on, first of all, what he cascades into, and second of all, if people start letting those hits through. Look, um, I've seen it happen where a food chain <laughs> player has cast first sliver and then they cascade into food chain. It's yeah. happened. <laughs> <laughs> and it's awkward when it happens too, because it, then it's like, uh, I didn't expect to get this far. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, and again, chat catching me. Thanks, chat. Uh, reminding me that, in fact, you cannot uh, counter any of Silvala's payoff spells because there's a little old card called Alsor Shepherd hidden behind that woodland bellower. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That that one mana green grand abolisher. <laughs> <laughs> so uh so it looks like here the hokey is just kind of dipping in the tank here, right? Four yeah, mana I mean, available. There's definitely some stuff that you gotta think about here, if, especially if you have something like a removal spell. Uh, the like you really have to consider what your timing is on the removal spell for the collector roof because you don't really want to unlock the specifically really the mana for LJ. Giving LJ the extra two mana is actually very relevant here. Um, mm -hmm. and also potentially if you fire it off here, uh, it could get countered where maybe LJ is tapping up further down the line. That is really really important. And it also looks like here that um, we have a little bit of an update, too. So as far as the way that um, Snacks, it looks like as far as the way that Snacks is playing now, uh, this is how that Snacks generally likes to play. Very conservative, laid back, gather lots of information and play patterns that are about the opponents, and then utilizing that information as another weapon in their arsenal. Yeah. So... Definitely a good strategy. I particularly do that myself as well. Um, oh my, we just... Oh man. So we did see... I just, I just want to catch up. We did actually see a Hammer of Nizan come down from Goto, which is a great way to bypass the oof, which means that once Hoki can actually make enough mana to um, recast the Goto, that Hammer can definitely help out. Um, but we are seeing a Phyrexian Soul Gorger <laughs> from... Yeah. Uh, from Silvala, pretty good. 
that's a big one also cycles itself because Silvala has an effect that allows the Silvala player well actually it allows any player to uh draw a card when a creature enters the battlefield and said on their side of the board that has the most power uh hilariously enough Silvala is almost always the player with the most power and creatures on board so almost exclusively Silvala getting that effect but uh yeah. definitely helps out Hey, no one else is going to be slamming seven sevens and nine nines no, <laughs> like no. Silvala is. One minute, twelve twelves. Oh man. Yeah. <laughs> Which, like, um, from what it looks like, that's. Uh, I mean, other than like a Timber Saber Tooth, uh, I mean, that's really the only piece that we're missing here is just being able to manipulate the fat fatties that we have on board uh, yeah. on Silvala. You know, so. And at each dude that hits the board is just going to keep fueling that Gaia's Cradle and keep fueling the plan. Yep. Well, that being said, Phyrexian Soul Cruiser unfortunately does have a cute little of upkeep that's not great for the Silvala player. Having to sacrifice a creature every upkeep or <laughs> sacrifice another extra creature every upkeep, uh, not great. But definitely a nice one to cycle here. So we're seeing a Silvala activation. This is for eight. A lot of mana. <laughs> And uh, do we have a count on cards in hand for hire? I, I believe I saw four. Uh, I think it's something around like three or four. Um, we'll have to see when they spread out their hand a bit more. Because um, that's going to give us a lot more info of like, okay, things, if it's only like two or three cards in hand, then you know you can feel a lot more comfortable knowing, okay, hire has to get a little bit more gas under the belt. But yeah, if, like you have to yeah there's fewer chances to get what are we okay so oh we're courting cord? yeah oh okay. i think we're seeing some court action here oh my god yeah this is i <laughs> i think this might just be game <laughs> yeah um Cord is one of the best uh, tutors in this deck, especially because it's not Green Sun Zenith, so you can, again, Eternal Witness it back. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I can't imagine this doesn't just do it if this resolves. Um, the only thing that we could have happen here would be like... It, it's it's so contrived. It would have to be like Snacks would have to have removal for the Alsor Shepherd, and then like LJ has counter magic for it, like one mana counter magic for this. And then pray that Hire doesn't have Vela Summer or Autumn's Veil yeah, or like or just any, like that. just anything else. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like this has to be a one trick pony. Like if yeah. it's anything else, it's it's gonna be looking like lights out. To be honest. Yeah. Uh, so, so just for those that don't know, um, yeah. off of this Cordicon, I. Uh, it, which it this is a huge chord at least seven right it is uh, i believe this is for seven exactly so we have the savala tapped with a uh, land to make eight and then we're tapping two creatures to convoke so it's a chord for seven um the big seven drop in Silvala is regal for us um it's a seven drop green creature when it enters the battlefield you draw a card for each green creature you control or i believe it is it actually is a green creature it might just be all creatures you control um, I am going to, yeah, so it's each green creature you control, um, yeah. which would be for four, uh, five here. So, so Vala, the three creatures on the board right now, and then Regal Force itself. Mm -hmm. Um, so it would, uh, that would get you gassed up again. That being said, this could be for six. We don't actually know if it was paying for the Ristic study or not. I'm not sure if we've gone down the stack yet on that. Um, there, there potentially could still be a risk study trigger on this stack, and we could be floating a green. I'm not sure that is the case. There's not a lot left in the deck at six uh, past the Woodland Bellower, um, mm -hmm. but could be. We'll see. Yeah, um, which, ch a chat, correct me if I'm wrong, but, um, I mean, of course, you could just put it up for seven, acting as though it's a, you know, it's going to be Regal Force. But yeah. uh, you literally, with having access to Gaia's Cradle, um, I mean, you literally could go and get like a Timber Sabertooth here, or you could go yeah. get another Wind Condition and see it, and just progress even further and, and stumble into the win. Yeah. Um, it, like the other, I think the other thing at six here could be a Great Oak Guardian. Um, I'm not sure that the extra mana is what you want here. Um, there's comparatively, like, 
you you want to use your creature tutors sparingly for the most part here because they just because they do represent so much gas. Um, yeah. So like they'd have to have yeah. So here's the regal force. Beautiful. Um, so, so we're gonna draw five cards here, um, and then we're still gonna have a guy's cradle up. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven mana after this regal forest. It's a lot to do with whatever you want. Um, reminder, though, that there is still hull preacher legal in this format. <laughs> so yes. this that is something that both LJ and Snacks could have here. Yeah, honestly, I don't think they do, unfortunately, but. Yeah, because honestly, that's that escaped my mind for a moment. I've been playing right, without yeah, just holding. totally not used to it anymore. <laughs> yeah, and LJ is clearly holding up three mana. Yeah. So, unfortunately for the table, it looks like Hire is drawing those cards. Um. So obviously, there is a chance that there's a whiff here. Very unlikely at this point, considering it's seven mana. Um, there are a lot of things. Untappers, more creature tutors. Uh, there's a fair number of draw spells in the deck that will keep chaining like this. Um, we'll just have to see what Hire's doing. Yeah, I mean, five, uh, what was it? Five cards? That's a lot of gas in Somala. So, it at least yeah. has to have something. I mean... Oh, man. Oh my god, it's a Rich Curse expertise. Yeah, that's... Woo! Crazy. So this is gonna be six mana. Draw eight cards. Cast a five seer CM CMC or less per or spell actually from your hand without paying its mana cost. So just yeah, I yeah. There's there's so little of a chance of the deck fizzling at this point. I mean, like potentially maybe there's no untapper in hand and there's gonna be a mana gate at some point here, but. Yeah, well, I mean, we'll see. This is just so many cards. Yeah, because, I mean, at this point, um, Hire has drawn at least 12 plus cards if this resolves. So, the uh, if I'm not mistaken, Sylvala does generally play two uh, or even, uh, yeah, two or even three untappers. Uh, well, that, that's, that's, not counting, that's not counting the creatures, right? So, if you count, like, Vitalize and you count, like, the... Mm -hmm the non-creature untappers it goes up even more so there's like a very real chance that we something you know, yeah see like some mana producing thing here are we uh, not casting anything what are we now notably it looks like the hire has been paying for risk study or no i'm sorry it looks like hire hasn't been paying for risk study yeah so it so totally is drawing cards here yeah and if LJ does, if they don't, like, if, if uh, Hire does fizzle out here, uh, which, you know, wouldn't be a bad thing with the board presses in play, yeah. uh, uh, the, uh, you know, LJ could see a comeback from this uh, and actually put some law onto the board. So here, I, I think this is it. Um, that's, that's an Eldritch Evolution yeah. game cast for free off the Rishkar's expertise. Um, this is just gonna find disgusting things. Probably an untapper. I wouldn't be surprised to see something like a Quarian Ranger here, um, or a Scrib Ranger. Yeah, and uh, so of course, after if, if this resolves, uh, which it does look like it did because it went to exile, uh, yep. then it you know definitely gonna be grabbing that untapper. Uh, first thing to do, untap oh, that yeah. commander and keep going. Yeah. <laughs> Keep moving. I believe, if I'm counting right, uh, Hire still had a green mana left over after uh, casting the Risk Cars Expertise, so we'll have just enough to untap the Sylvala and retap and make an eight more mana. Um, so, you know, not bad. Yeah, I mean, as of right now, um, I've been trying to keep track, but it's been so much mana that's been spent in, the, in Hire's turn. Wait, we're up to like 35 mana? <laughs> spent over the court, yeah, just, oh my god. Wheeling and dealing. <laughs> Make yeah. mana spend it all, make more mana spend all of that mana, just keep it going. Savala, the, the mogul of the mana world. <laughs> <laughs> it's the yeah, it's the Savala Casino, man. You just make a bunch of mana, dump it all into a draw spell, hope you get there, keep going. <laughs> oh, it's not countered? Oh, okay. <laughs> all right, we'll keep going. <laughs> Here's another Roll one. Did you counter it? Dice again. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, hey. And one thing that um, 
because I don't know if you've heard this a lot as well, but uh, as far as in the CDH world, uh, one color and two color decks get a lot of hate, actually. Uh, and yeah, this just goes to show. Yeah. Yeah, like this well, goes to show that they can stand, stand toe to toe. <laughs> with it. Oh, yeah. I mean, especially when you have as broken of a commander as Sobala is. Um, when you have when you have a commander that that that's strong, like uh, helping to support the rest of the deck, you get to see stupid stuff like this. I mean, both of our monocolored decks this game have really put up a great showing, right? Goto just like threatening wins this entire game um, when there wasn't an oof in play, and then uh, Sawala just sneaking in from behind and just grabbing all of it with the just some some hits. I'd call them hits. <laughs> Would you call them hits? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I call them hits myself. That is, <laughs> it, it's it's really insane, it's, especially with the 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 lucky hits that you know Savala has seen, uh, and then, then not as we can see, nothing being able to be done about it because of the Allosaurus Shepherd. Yeah, it's just, yeah, it's so hard to interact here, which is I'm, what I'm assuming that we're uh, we're seeing talk from from the players. Is mm -hmm. like if they're they're trying to figure out some way to bypass. I personally, I have this discussion almost every game with people. It's like, all right, dude, like we need to have a discussion about how we bypass all of this, like protection and stuff, uh, just stop this person from winning. But it, it's so hard to get through an Alsor Shepherd and a Wandering Archaic here that I like. I think Hires just has it in the bag. Um, we yeah. did we did see a Scrub Ranger shortly sure. there. Seen Crone Ranger instead. Um, so the reason I believe why Hire is going for a Quarian Ranger instead of, instead of a Script Ranger here is because um, any removal would have already been used, so the pro blue isn't super consequential. But Quarian Ranger being an elf is consequential because you can actually reset it with a Wirewood Symbiote. Um, so you could activate Quarian Ranger to untap Savala, play Wirewood Symbiote, activate Wirewood Symbiote to activate Savala, and then replay the Quarian Ranger and get another activation out of it. Yeah, and and at that point, um, I mean, if I'm not well, no, yeah, you would still need uh, one more piece to quote unquote go infinite. Um, yeah, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Sovala, yeah, no, Sovala is a May. It is a May, so you cannot yeah. draw. So yeah. yes, you you can not kill yourself by accident by drawing through your entire deck. Um, so you you can make the infinite mana and start doing loops. Um. So the, the third piece for that combo to win the game would be a Teamer Sabertooth. I'm not mm -hmm. sure that we have a Teamer Sabertooth here. Um, potentially we would have seen that earlier. Uh, we also have a Shia getting there for, I believe, a bit more startup mana. Actually, no, it's a bit less startup mana. Uh, Teamer Sabertooth is six mana to start up. Um, so, I mean, a Shia Creator Ranger just gets there. Um, so, yeah, there's the a lot of talk. Yeah. Okay, so we're back up to eight. We'll see what the follow up here is. Hey, Elliot, I don't think my heart can take much more. <laughs> it's such <laughs> everything going on. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Uh, man, if if there's if there is like some crazy sequence of interaction here, I might just have a heart attack. <laughs> yeah. D done. Uh, done for magic for the day for the weekend. <laughs> like, yeah. Just for life, put me in a coffin. <laughs> yeah. Hang up. Just, no, not, not going to do it anymore. So, um, definitely going to take some time to go through the entire oh, and, stack yeah. of cards so, in uh, <laughs> Iris Hand. Here's the Teamer Saber Tooth. So, right now, this doesn't necessarily win the game, but I mean, it, it turns every forest into a Savala activation here for three mana. Um, so you're you're profiting five mana off each of those activations. So we're seeing uh this team of saber tooth represents another fifteen net mana off this Silvala, and then one more piece here just immediately wins the game, and that one piece can actually be tutored off of the uh the um sorry, the woodland beller that's in play. So this is game if nobody has interaction. Yeah. Yeah, at this point it's just it's not just waiting to see if um, if there is any interaction at all, or if they start to move to what I like to call the scoop step. <laughs> oh yeah, scoop phase. Keep it up. LJ, for the record, is still drawing off of Rhystic Study. It's it's hard to interact with this at this point. Um, 
but the the issue here is that once higher starts this loop, uh, he'll be netting enough mana, and he'll he's only one casting one uh, creature spell per iteration of the loop that you just pay for the risk study eventually. And if we don't find the the interaction before then, um, and it has to be really really good specific interaction, and I think it it has to be for more than just LJ, like snacks and Togi would have to have things as well. Um, yeah, th this should be higher wrapping it up so um interesting to note i uh, after generating like a, an obscene amount of mana you could also uh timber saber tooth the uh the woodland bellower to go get your final piece of the millennium puzzle right yeah yeah uh, yeah so so woodland bellower can get the uh the wirewood symbiote here and then that represents mm -hmm. a win as well so multiple ways to get there, and even if there is some interact, yeah. <laughs> we're just, just gonna see the Phyrexian dreadnought. Right? Yeah, we'll we'll see the dreadnought. All right. Yep. Keep keep making even bigger dudes, even larger people. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, because now with the Timber Saber Tooth, in response to the sacrifice trigger, you, you can activate the Sylvala and yeah. make your mana bounce it with the Timber Saber Tooth, and just keep going over and over, drawing cards. Yeah. <laughs> this is this is actually higher just showing off that he has a Phyrexian Dreadnought. <laughs> <laughs> which mind you, it looks real, which mind you, Phyrexian Dreadnoughts yeah, it, in, in the wild are hard to find. It is it is on the reserve list. <laughs> it is yeah. yeah, not an easy card to get a hold of, so I still have a buddy in my hometown uh that has been looking for one for 18 months. Has not Crazy. found a way to buy one yet. It is. <laughs> so <laughs> maybe maybe Hyrus hoarding all of them. Yeah. Oh <laughs> yeah. Has all the Phyrexian dreadnoughts. <laughs> He's that big of a Sawala fan. Each time he gets a win, he orders another Phyrexian dreadnought. <laughs> <laughs> so we have Snacks casting a Vampiric Tutor here. Um, I'm assuming this is going to be paying for the one air kick and then letting LJ draw a card. Um, yeah. I, I I it's I think it's it's basically just the responsibility for the rest of the table to like feed LJ cards to try to in some fashion find an answer here. Um which granted since we've already seen the force of will from both LJ and Snacks, here what we're really gonna be wanting to see is things like a mental misstep or even uh like a delay. Uh just anything to try yeah, and so down. the issue, the issue with delay here is that one RK copies it. So you need to actually get something that you can pay for here. Is the issue? Yeah. That also deals with this, which is slim and just Me, it, yeah. I'm not sure. It's middle miss much. Or or, or yeah, not just survival okay. putting force will on top. Yeah. Nox Nox works here. Um, you can. Counter the Phyrexian Dreadnought. I'm not sure this is enough still. Um, there's a lot of mana still with the Sylvala, and I'm pretty sure Pyre still has the Woodland Beller line available to him, if I'm not miscounting. Um, uh, how much available mana does he have? Well, that you it looks like you. there's a dice that has a three on it. So it might be three. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely not storm count. I know, <laughs> I know <Yeah>. that. <laughs> so, um, yeah, if, if three men is available, then definitely has the uh, efficiency for the Woodland Builder Rely to generate infinite yeah. mana and infinite draw. Yep. So for everybody watching, um, the Al Sor Shepherd only protects green spells. So for Axiom Dreadnought is still fair game for counter magic here. Um, unfortunately, I, I, for the rest of the table here, um, I think there's still a win even without this uh, Phyrexian Dreadnought. I believe Hire might just be making... It, he might just be thinking that he's going to like cast this, put it into play, make some extra mana, and then start paying for the Rhystic Study like three spells before he would normally, normally be able to. Yeah. Because um, from, just from what we can see, uh, there, a, there is a, you can loop Kyrian Ranger, uh, the Timber Sabertooth, and Sylvala to make an egregious amount of mana. 
Yeah, um, it, it it just turns every forest into a Savala activation. Yeah. So you just, like, make way too much here with, like, larger creatures. So, yeah, I mean, you can you can manipulate Regal Force to do the Phyrexian Dreadnought job. You can use Wire, or Woodland Bellower to go in and make infinite mana. Um, There's like, also a Soul Gorger underneath the, um, the Savala still here, I'm pretty sure. So. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I totally forgot about the Soul Gorger, too. So, there, yeah, there's a lot of tools at the disposal. It's just finding out the routes to take. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah, so it, it, it does look like we're casting this Noxious Revival. Putting a Veil of Summer on the stack. Okay. So that way, yeah, so that way the, the, uh, the Force of Will will be uncountable. So even if uh, yeah, even the sorry, they, even if there's a counter, counter, yeah. Yep, all right. All right, I'm on board. I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe LJ has. It could be that LJ has another free interactive spell here. I'm just, I'm struggling to see a line where they can actually still stop higher, even with this force of will. Yeah. And so it did. It did, it did look struck. like. Yeah, it did look like LJ. So paid for the veil is not going to pay for the noxious and hypothetically is not going to pay for the force of will either yeah i mean because think about it like this um it, even if the if the force of will goes on the stack even if the wandering arcade copies it i mean it's not countering a force of will no it it's not so if anything it's just going to copy or it's going to attempt to counter well i mean the vampiric tutor is resolving so that's not going to be a legal target um, yeah it's just, it's just, yeah, it's, you can counter the Phyrexian Dreadnought here, or, like, you either, you either counter the Phyrexian Dreadnought, because it's the only thing that is probably going to be counterable this turn, or you, like, hope and wait that Hire is doing, like, Hire goes for a risky win line, which I don't think is almost ever an option here. Yeah, so Snacks is going to resolve his Vamp Tutor. He's putting a card on top right now. Um, that shouldn't matter because uh, it's going to be hard to gain access to that card um, without also giving Hire whatever he wants. Um, and also, even if you're casting that card, you're not going to be able to pay for it most of the time. Um, okay, so we're casting Force of Will on the Phyrexian Dreadnought. Pitching Remora and Hire just has the Autumn's Veil. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it was all for naught. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it can be a counterable all you want. Bro. Like, yep. You got it. I'd like to count. <laughs> I'd like to cast this uncounterable thing that makes everything else even more uncounterable. <laughs> oh, by the way, uh, if you have another counter spell, can I get a copy? <laughs> <laughs> See, it's it's not a bait if you could just protect it and then turn it into you know not a bait <laughs> exactly yeah so two mana still left available so that means that when the phyrexian dreadnought resolves you have that one mana to activate Savala to make 12 more mana putting you to yes. 13 and i'm actually not sure do we still have a Quirion Ranger activation ready to go? Because if so, then we can do that again and make another 12 mana. Uh, no, we do not have a Quirion Ranger activation. Okay, uh, at least gotcha. not one that's been shown. Right. There, there might have been a shortcut for communication purposes. Or, or, or there might have been some communication on a shortcut for just, you know, uh, simplicity purposes. But yeah. <laughs> oh, we're counting. <laughs> we're counting mana here. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I don't have enough fingers for that, bro. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. 13 mana, it looks like. Okay, so we're letting the Phyrexian Dreadnought go. Casting Hyrax Tower Scout to get another untap on Solvala to make even more mana. <laughs> and this is what we call 
magical Christmas lands. <laughs> oh yeah, it's just you have all the mana you could ever want. You have the win on board at any point in time if you choose to go for it. But the, the, we, we don't necessarily have to go there yet. We could we could stand a bit more making mana. <laughs> Yeah, and um, sometimes I like to draw cards too. So yeah. <laughs> just yeah. <laughs> anyway, this this is in fact infinite mana. Anyway, um, yeah, Hyrax Tower Scout is five mana to um, cast and bounce with the Team Saber too. This one mana to activate some walls, so you need a creature that makes or a creature with seven or more power. We have that with the Phyrexian Soul Gorger, so this is infinite mana. Uh, and then we have a oh. Hello? <laughs> oh, okay, so it looks like I think we might just be demonstrating a loop here um, for infinite mana. Yeah, and then we just are looking for outlets and how we're actually going to kill the table. It looks like we're putting a Garrick in play. All right. Oh, yeah, that's right, yeah, because uh, with Timber Sabretooth and having unlimited mana, you can bounce everything, make it untapped, um, and then yeah. just, at that point, just choose whatever outlet you want if you want to make everything yeah, pretty much. big. Because we haven't gone to combat yet, either. No, we haven't. So, really, just, you can, I'm pretty sure, give everything trample. I'm fairly sure there's stuff that gives trample here. Um, uh, I can check. Great up party uh gives uh plus two plus two and trample if i'm not mistaken uh if uh, not crater hook behemoth is always an option <laughs> yeah sometimes it is oh you actually know what sorry it, it is it will be actually a cogla i believe you can loop cogla which is the giant fighty monkey <laughs> to oh, fight everybody's yeah. everybody's creatures make an infinitely large creature for each of your opponents and then just go to combat and uh hit them in the face real good <laughs> Yeah, I keep forgetting about Cogla. Cogla is so strong. <laughs> Cog like... Cogla's great for this <laughs> for this one. <laughs> um, but yeah, wow, what what an impressive performance from Hire. Um, and really the entire pod, like stopping the turn one wheel from Godo, um, trying to like stop Godo and like just hold back the floodgates for just long enough, and then Hire just able to slip through at the end there. Um yeah, really there's, there's, there's the giant monkey. <laughs> yeah, you really couldn't ask for a better performance from your deck. Um, I mean, even even with a mold of five, let's let's reiterate that. Yeah, a no, mold of five. <laughs> I mean, that's, like, that's the power of Savala, right? Like as we were saying earlier in the game, you you need you actually need so little to actually get there and win the game. You just need like a big creature and then just something to dump mana into to start going. And looks like the table scoops it up here. So, uh, yeah, hire. Have one on me tonight, man. You earned that. <laughs> that was impressive, to say the least. Yeah. Um, and kind of so, uh, line back up with our predictions before the game, uh, where we were talking about how, you know, if one player just needs to go for it, and then Savala can back that up and, and seal the deal. Yeah. Um... Anyway, that is the game from the commentators. Uh, me and Jacoby are going to hop off, pass you guys back into the very capable hands of the analyst desk. <laughs> wow, what a game. I'm, I'm looking forward to watching the breakdown for that one.